So by way of housekeeping, I'm going to make a request, and this is, this is, it needs to be heard differently than it normally is. So most of us have cell phones on our hips or in our purse. My request, and this may be the hardest thing you have to do today, my request is that you turn these off, not just on vibrate, because that will interrupt you. And it will serve you if you do this. So that's my request, is that you'll actually turn your phones off and give yourself the next two hours. Dedicate the next two hours to you and don't let your cell phone be, be something that corrupts that. So that's the first request. The next request is that Steve has requested that no one do, other than those that are authorized to, nobody does any video recording or voice recording. That way everything can kept, be kept in context. So, so we'll want to make sure that that occurs. And then <clears throat> you guys were each given a packet at the front door. Those packets are to remain sealed until Steve instructs you to do something with them. So that's another request made by Steve. Now it's my honor to be able to stand before you today and I want you to know that there's not another place in the whole world that I would rather be than right where I'm at right now. I, I speak to you from a place of gratitude to be able to be in the room with the people that are here. I, I know, I don't know all of you, but I know many of you have rearranged your world and have shifted things and moved things and it's been difficult to be here today. And I acknowledge you for that. And I acknowledge everyone else that has just shown up and you're not sure why you're here because there are some of you in the room too. There are some of you that have come because somebody has just said to you, hey, you have to come and you trust them or maybe they talked you into it. And I want you to know that the next two hours of your life will be the best two hours of your life if you let it. The Dusatui story is about a human being, somebody that made a conscious decision. Deuce is no different than the rest of us, and we're going to learn that. Now, I met Steve Hardison back in the spring of 1996. I was working for a company that hired him to come in and coach the two owners of the company. I didn't know Steve from anyone back then. All I saw was this tall guy that walked around with a smile and sort of had this appearance. And I'll tell you, at first glance, I might have judged him a little bit. And I remember thinking, who is this guy that thinks he can come in here and really shift this company? This was back in 1996. So as time goes on, I see the, the company changing, and I go to the two guys that own the company, and I say, listen, <clears throat> and at the time I was a sales consultant for them, I said, I'd like, to, I'd like to meet this guy. I'd like to get some time with him. And they said, well you have to pay for it. So I requested that they pay for it and after some time <laughs> of working through the process they said okay they gave me one hour with Steve. <clears throat> I want you to know that that hour changed my life but I didn't know it would. In fact I showed up five minutes late to that meeting. Anybody that knows Steve Hardison knows that when you're scheduled time with him you don't be late and I was and that was my first lesson among other things. I gained a deep respect for him and what he doesn't know, or I guess we've talked about it since, but the things I learned in that hour reshaped my life and I moved through my life differently because of what I learned from him. <clears throat> it's because of who he was at the time and how he, how he talked to me. So we fast forward to the summer of 2007. I'm moving through life fast like all of us in this room. And I run in, I walk into a restaurant, I'm by myself, I rarely eat lunch by myself, but I do this day, and I walk in and I sit down, I've got my food, and I look, I look over and guess who I see? I see Steve Hardison. He's eating lunch with my, the CEO of the company I used to work for years and years ago. And so I go in and I eat my food, and then on my way out, I stop and I say hello to, to Reese, and then I introduce myself to Steve. And, Steve says, do we know each other? And I said, well, I know you. You're Steve Hardison. You've uh, you changed my life. And he said, well, I, I, I don't remember you. <laughs> so I got through that quickly. <laughs> and, and we exchanged information, and I left. And I, I just, it was kind of a pleasure to see him. And, and an hour and a half later, I pull into my office, 
And guess who's walking out of my office? Steve Hardison. And so we have a conversation together for about an hour. One week from that time, I wrote Steve a check to coach with him. It was one of the best decisions I've ever made. But today, this is not about Steve Hardison. It's not about me. It's not about, about my experiences. This is about you. Every single person in this room, you've done something to be here. And something's moved you to be here. And I promise you that if you'll open your mind and you will just be with yourself today, you'll leave different. That's a guarantee. Now, some of you, each of you have the opportunity to take whatever position you want today as we sit together for the next few hours. You get to choose how you're going to receive this. Some of you are going to find yourselves having a little battle between your thoughts of who this guy is or who Deuce is or how does this apply to me. And what I'm making the request to you is that you'll actually just be with yourself. If you will do this, I promise you that your life will be different, that you'll actually be able to move through your life differently going forward than you did when you got here. There's very few people that I've ever met or that I've ever been with that have the kind of impact that Steve Hardison has had on me as an individual. But what's so great is I, I have the ability to, I, I live in the same town as him, so I know a lot of people that he knows, and I've, I've actually got to watch this occur multiple times in multiple settings. There's nobody I've ever met that is more committed to another person than him. And I promise you that if you'll hold that space today, he'll be that committed to you. That's what has him be here. You know, everything that everyone's done to have this event occur, not a single person is being paid to be here. And nobody paid to be here. Some people generously donated so that the building could be leased out. But nobody paid money to get in. Every single thing that we've done has been about you. Let's get you in the room and let you experience what's possible for you. I want to acknowledge Deuce Latui for his courage, for the courage he had to do whatever he did that put him and Steve together, that has created this whole thing. And this, this thing about him, about TBOLIT and FL, is more than just him, it's more than just Steve. It's all about you, it's all about me, and it's what we can do, it's who we can be. I started out by saying there's no place I'd rather be in the whole world than standing right here. Most of you probably don't really understand that because you're just like, okay, look, I got here and here I am and somebody told me to come. I promise you that if you're willing to be open in your mind and listen and look, it will be, you will say the same thing I just said. To me, it's like not even a question. Now, Steve will do anything. I've never seen anybody that's willing to do more to serve somebody than him. He's willing to go the extra mile. There's nothing he won't do to serve another human being. And I've watched it in the last two weeks. I already knew it, but I've watched it occur as he's done things and helped people and created ways that other people would help other people. And he's here for you today, each of you, individually, each person in this room. And you're here for you. If you're not here for you, get here for you. Do whatever you have to do in your mind so that you're really here for you. And it's my promise that it will be worth it. Can you hear that? Thank you for your attentiveness. Thank you for your respect. Thank you for the way that you're listening. 
this is what we need for the next two hours. This will serve you. It's my pleasure to introduce Steve Hardison. Thank you, Ben. That was very gracious of you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Watch your step. <clears throat> so this is actually the first time I've ever worn a headset and done this. So this is, this is actually new to me. So I'm not a, I'm not a paid public speaker. Uh, they did a little camera thing today, and I, I said, you're going to have to show me how to do all that. I've never done it before. So I'm very thankful to be here today. I grew up in Clearfield. I went to Weber State. My wife and I both graduated from Weber State when it used to be called Weber State College. And as I come into the valley, I come off of 6 South, and I went by what used to be the Roadway Inn. And I was a linen boy at the Roadway Inn. I remember flipping mattresses and getting dirty linen and dirty glasses, and you know that was the job I had. When I look, look out and see who's in the audience, I, I'm actually taken by it. I have a... And so you have to forgive me if I get emotional. And there's a, a young man that uh, came up to me uh, named Joe Gay. He lived with my uncle. We were in junior high together. I haven't seen him for a long time. and It's kind of an amazing see thing to see somebody you haven't seen for a while. And I see people I went to high school with. Of course, my family's here. And there's my wife. Where have you been? I wondered if you're going to make it. Where have you been? <laughs> you okay? Okay. So, <clears throat> I would like to thank Brandon for the way he introduced me and the, the attention you're giving me. Many of you have flown on an airplane and you've listened to the gal talk about doing the seatbelt or the guy talking about doing the seatbelt. Do you remember how much attention you paid to those people? So there's a couple ways you can listen. You can listen like you've heard this before, like would be in your own mind. Or, or you could listen like the steward or the flight attendant said, we're going to crash. You'd listen from a different way, wouldn't you, if you're on the plane? He or she says, we're going to crash. And all of a sudden, your magazine's not important and whatever's going on, and you haven't heard this before, and they're going to give you instructions on how to save your life or possibly save your life or increase the odds of saving your life. That's how I would like you to listen. Not because it's me speaking, because it is your life. It is actually your life. And to have this many people in one place to be concentrated on one thing is really, really profound. I honestly do not care if you remember my name. I care that what you remember is what you might experience inside yourself. That when we're through today, what would be possible is for you to see something, and, and I'm not questioning how great you already are, that you would see something you hadn't seen before because I was able to share with you something I did with another human being, and you could see how that would be possible in your own life in your own way. My promise is that if you do that, no matter your age, no matter how old or young you are, no matter how successful or unsuccessful you are, no matter how happy or unhappy you are, that will occur in a, an extraordinary way. This TBO, LIT, NFL didn't exist till September 7th. Those letters weren't even put together. Somebody spoke a commitment of that, and 54 days later, we're sitting here and we're going to talk about it. It did not exist. I got an email today from Paris. The gentleman told me he got a copy from a gentleman in Luxembourg, and that came from Germany, of the story. I've got emails from people that read on the website about TBOLITNFL and said, you know, I don't know who Steve Hardison is. I don't know who Deuce Latouille is. 
but what I do know is that I'm going to be the best confectioner in all of Scotland. And she writes TBO, L-I-T, NFL with cupcakes. And then when she goes to the ocean side, she takes seashells and writes TBO, L-I-T, NFL in seashells with a heart under it. I have never, in my 25 years of what, I've did, what I do, I've never been recorded. I've never been videotaped. I've never been interviewed for TV. All of these are first. They're not because I want to do them. I've worked for 20 years one-on-one -on -one with uh, CEOs of companies, and they wanted to record what I said, or if they had me speak to their company, they wanted to record. I said, no, I'd like them to listen now. I don't want to say something somebody goes and listens to later. And so as Deuce and I were doing what we're doing, which I'm going to share with you, I told him, Deuce, I just need you to know I, I'm not going to have anything recorded. I'll go, I'll go speak, but I'm not going to have anybody record it. I'm certainly not going to have him televise it. And I don't need anybody to interview me. And then I woke up one morning. No, I didn't wake up. It woke me up. It woke me up and wrote through me. And I, I'm going to read what came through me. I don't normally read when I speak to a group or to people. You know, when I, when I do my coaching, I've coached one client for 18 years. I've never written a note. I've never tried to teach him anything. I don't have any files. If you came in my office, you think, this dude doesn't even have any files. They didn't have a computer. So I just with the person. So this wrote through me. I'm going to do something I don't think I've ever done in a church talk or somewhere else, and that's like go over and read something out of a book, you know, something that I wrote. That's not what I do. But I want to do that with you today because I want you to know why I'm willing to have somebody photograph me or, you know, think something because, you know, I have nothing special to say any more than any of you do. Except now I do from a place I can see it would be useful to share it with the world. But before I do that, let me tell you how I got here. I did not try to come here. This is not something I was trying to get done. I had an experience with Deuce Latui, and I love that man dearly. He's amazing. I had an experience with him. And as I do with my clients, it's confidential, except if there's something very powerful. I have the right to tell anyone, anyone about any of my clients. I tell them that. You, this is totally confidential, except if there's something great, you've got the biggest blabber mouth in the world making sure that people know you're great. So my son, who I work with, and I give him a great big zero discount. My son pays me exactly what anyone else who hired me paid me. You know why? Because I want my son to be as committed as the other people are. So my client is my son, and I tell him about my other, I tell him about my other client. And I tell him about Deuce Latouille, and I just tell him the story. And he goes, and he tells the owner of his company the story. And the owner of that company calls me up and says, you know, your son Blake told us about Deuce Latouille. Would you be willing to come and tell that story to us? I says, that's not what I do. That's not what I do for a living. You, you can go over, somebody put it on a website, go read it. And he was very compelling. You know, he did the leverage, like, hey, wait, your son works at our company, come help our company. And I said, so, hi, Scott, I'll give you, I'll give you one hour. And he told me a time, let, let me know back there, whoever's running this stuff, if I get out of the way where you need me to be, because I don't know how to do all this. Um, so I said, I'll give you one hour. He said, okay, we're going to have 12 people from our company. They will come over, and they'll listen to you for one hour. So I go to a place called King's Fish Restaurant in Tempe, Arizona. And there's supposed to be 12 people there and there are 60 people that fit in a place that about 48 people can fit. And when I go in, I'm scheduled to be there one to two. They don't even have their lunch at one o'clock. Now, if, if you were in that King's Fish Restaurant, because I don't know if you are, if there's anybody that was in that restaurant, stand up so I know if you're here. So... One, two, three, four, five, six, I was there. So seven of us will experience, the only seven that will experience this in life. The seven of us. And I said to them, I don't want to compete with you eating lunch. I'm so sorry I'm speaking over your lunch. And then I just talked to them from the bottom of my heart about what had happened. Like I shared with my son. 
People went out of that room and did things that were unbelievable. I didn't ask them to go do anything. They were touched by what they learned. One man went out of that room and he saw this TBO, LIT NFL, and he went and hired a sign that eight seconds out of every minute, 24 hours a day for 30 days, flashes that up there so people would see it and go over and read the story about Deuce Latouille. He paid that out of his own pocket. Another guy distributed it around the world to 32,000 people that just shared the story. And this just went crazy from a one-hour conversation at a restaurant. So <clears throat> that had probably been about the 58th time I had shared the story. Not in public, just to people. I felt so much passion in what could happen. I kept telling the story over and over. And then I was telling a Dr. Gibson down in California the story, my voice is about gone. I, I had no voice left from telling this story over and over again. So he was friends with Julie Blake, who's really been responsible, for, I don't mean by herself, you know, no one can do this by themselves, but it's the one who's been responsible to get everyone together. And he told her a little bit about the story. She calls me up. She says, we need to do something about your voice. And she does stuff with voices. So the next morning I wake up and there's an MP3 thing. It says, this is for you, Steve. Here's what you do this morning to get your voice back. And then I told her about Deuce Latouille. Well, I made a wrong decision there because <laughs> she called me later and she said, hi, Phil Fiore. She said, uh, hey, would you come up to Utah and do whatever you did in that restaurant? And I said, no, that's not what I do. Just go read that. Go read the website. Share it yourself. And I'm in my wife's office. I've got an office of my own. She's got one. So I'm having this conversation back and forth with Julie, but my wife's overhearing it. And I said, Julie, I don't want to travel someplace to go talk to people about that. If they want to come, I, here's what I do. This is what I do for a living. And I, and I really don't like traveling that much. I, I, I ran a worldwide semiconductor company, and if I never ate in a restaurant or got in a plane again, that's too soon for me. And I mean that literally. Uh, so my wife's... Just, she's just this wonderful lady. She has no malice. She's, there's, she, I never hear her speak meanly about anyone. She's just kind and gracious. So she says, Oh, Steve, don't we have to be up to BYU for that symposium that I'm speaking at on the 29th? And Julie Blake kind of overhears that and says, Oh, wow, check that out. So you're already going to be up here, huh? <laughs> so I said, okay, okay, here's what I'll do. She, she, somebody's you know, kind of grilling me. Uh, what time do you start? What time do you finish? When does a Amy finish? And I said, she doesn't finish till 1. I said, here's what I'll do. I'll give you two hours, 2.30 to 4.30. You tell me where to be, and I'll be there. On two conditions. Number one, that everyone knows I'm not coming up to teach them a doggone thing. And that nobody's charged anything to hear this story. It would be like putting 300, 400, 500, 600, whatever we have here, people in a living room, and I'm just simply going to tell the story. That's how I'm here. So any other reason you could make up or anybody that watches that tape or whatever, they're making that up in their head. My life's great where I'm at. I could stay in my little, I call it the shed. That's my office with the people I'm with. That's why I'm here. Now, my commitment is to share this story with you like it's the last story I ever get to tell. Like it's the last time I ever get to speak. And my promise is I'll do that. But before I do, I want to read you what I wrote, not what I wrote like my logic, what came through me that will allow me to tell this story and be videoed or filmed. So with your permission, I want, I want to read something here. And bear with me and stay with me. I, I don't do the reading stuff because I don't know how to figure out get through all the papers and that stuff. So I'm going to read what I wrote. I'm going to read it exactly as it is. If the grammar's bad or if I said something, it's just how it is. It's just, I'm going to read it exactly like it came. There's no, no editing on this thing. Though I am telling this story, and I participated with Deuce in this story, it is not about me. It is not about Deuce. It is about you. Please help me as I tell this story. Please know that I am just a man, and I will make mistakes in sharing it. I could get a date or a number wrong. Please forgive me. Please get the essence of this story. I could get some chronology confused. Please forgive me for that. Just get the essence of the story. Please know that what I am going to say 
or what I'm going to react is not me saying that you ought to do this or that it's the right way it should have been done or the way is in, even, it is even a good way. It's just, or that it's the best way. It just happens to be the way I did it. So I'm just going to tell you exactly how it happened. But you'll have to forgive me if that offends somebody or if that's, wow, that guy doesn't like people or, man, he's angry. What's wrong with him? There may be some in the audience that could be offended by things I did or said in what I'm calling the Deuce Latouille story. My own daughter, Stephanie, was going to join us at the presentation in Tempe, and my wife reminded me how sensitive she is to loud noises. Imagine me being her father. Or anything that could look unkind or violent. I told Steph what would occur. She thanked me, and she chose not to attend. She simply read the story that my wife had written from all the emails So if any of you are like my daughter and you want to leave now or you want to sit by a door in case you've had some experience that because I might raise my voice or I might do something, it might offend you or scare you, get toward the edges. That's not my intention. That's not what I'm trying to do. My intention is that everyone in this room be riveted on the essence of this story to see how it is their story. For those few of you, and it will be very few, who may find zero correlation, please accept my apology now. I know how valuable your time is, and I did not want to waste it. That is not my intention. Thank you all for your generous listening. Thank you for your support. I want you to pull for me. I want you to be out there assisting me. Help him remember how to tell this. Help him to say something that will be effective for me. Have it where you're for me. Be in the room. Forget about if I'm too thin or too tall or, you know, what does he make? Or Drop that away. Pull for me in every way you can pull for me. I promise you to the extent that you do this, you will be blessed from the things you will ever, you, that you'll see for you. Have you ever heard me speak, do this, honey? In all the years that we've been married, read out of a, a text? I'm telling you, this is the first time I've ever done this. And it was from reading this that I said, you can film me. So please pay attention to the next part of it. Please know that this is a story of two people having several conversations. It is not a seminar. It is not a motivational speech. And yet some of you may be motivated. It is simply a story being shared that someone asked me to share. Julie Blake. And I'm going to share it like it's the last time I ever got to share. Please forgive me if my passion... or my intensity or my way of being hurts or offends any of you. That is not my intention. What may be perceived by some of you to be anger, frustration, unkindness, etc., is actually commitment in love in a different package. Please know that I honor all belief systems, including the belief system of not believing. I am not so concerned with what you believe as I am that you live what you believe. If you are an atheist, please be a kick butt, there ain't no God atheist. Please know that if and when I refer to God, I am referring to your God, the God of your understanding. And if you have no God, I'm referring to that for you. Please forgive me if I say something that offends your particular belief system. That is not my intention. My intention is that no matter what you do or believe or don't believe, it is that you get the essence of this story and that you put it to your specific belief system. When I talk about creating, I'm not wanting to compete with God or even be seen as, or, or be seen as minimizing God, the God of your understanding. I'm talking about you partnering with God, the God of your understanding. If I say something that doesn't fit into your particular belief system, throw it out. If it doesn't work for you, and get whatever golden nuggets you can get. Please forgive me if I say something that you think or believe, that you may think I'm belittling God or something you believe. I'm not. Please do not waste your time trying to make sense of me. My wife still can't figure me out. We've been married 33 years. I am here simply to tell this story. That's it. I don't want anything from you. I don't need you to do anything. I'm here to tell a story. What I ask you to do with any of the extra time that you'd be up here looking at me and deciding about me or does he make sense or who is he, 
I ask you to take that time and make sense of yourself. I ask you that you literally sit here today and make sense of who you are, who's sitting in the chair. Make sense of how the essence of this story can be useful in your extraordinary life. And for all the other whatever else's I could say or do or not say or do that could cause you to focus on me rather than focus on the essence of this story, forgive me. This is about you. Don't care, compare your religious philosophy with the story. Get the essence of the story and allow it to assist you in the beauty of whatever your religious, spiritual, secular philosophy is. I'm not talking about, about religion. Go get that at your church, your mosque, your synagogue, your men's or women's club. Again, if I do or say something that sounds like I'm disrespecting you or your beliefs, forgive me. That is not my intention. My intention is that this story allows you to see what is important for you and what it is for you to have a personal, internal commitment if you choose to. Now, I would like to tell you what happened to Deuce Latui. And me? Or, and I? And me. She's an English major. I'm kind of a... I kind, I kind, of, kind of got a soft heart. And I actually really do care about people. On September 5th, I got up on a Sunday morning and I opened up the Arizona Republic. And there was an article there about Matt Leinart, who played for USC. And here's a little of the background. He was the Heisman Trophy winner, national championship team, drafted in the first round, went to the Cardinals, and as a rookie played. Played fair, but for a rookie it's a tough game. Then the Cardinals go and draft Kurt Warner. He comes in, and he's a superstar. So Matt Leinart goes to second on the chart for two years. So then Matt's, and when, when Kurt retires, Matt's number one again. The Cardinals go out and get another quarterback, Derek Anderson. He beats out Matt Leinart. Not only beats him out, Matt Leinart isn't second. He's not even signed to be with the team. The team's going to release, release him. That's what I read in the morning of September 5th on Sunday. And I'm sure it looked to my wife like I've been reading obituaries. Like, who died? Well, who died for me was Matt Leinart. Not Matt Leinart, the football player. Matt Leinart, the human being. Like, where was he at right now that day? Where was he sitting? What room was he in? Where, where he's, and, and some people say, oh, he made a lot of money, who cares? Or, you know, like, no, where's he at? I, I literally thought, where, where's he sitting right now? ESPN saying, he's not on a team, nobody wants to pick him up, my paper says he's a washout. And it's like, where's the man sitting? Where's he at right this minute? I'd like to go be with him. So my wife says, what, what are you going to do? I'm, I'm going to find out where he's at. Well, what would you do? I would talk to him. His problems had nothing to do with football. The outcome was football, the symptom was football, but the cause wasn't football. And so I said to my wife, I'm going to go try to get with Matt Leinart. I don't know Matt Leinart, he doesn't know me. He doesn't need to know me. If I could have a little time with him, I could actually assist him. And I could actually get with him if he didn't know me, if I could find out how to get to him. So I go do what I do. I went and sat down in a chair and I thought about it. This is Sunday morning, September 5th. And the thought comes to me, oh, call Vi Sikihima. I knew Vi when he was 20-ish. I watched him play at BYU. I watched him when he played at St. Louis. I watched him when he played at Phoenix. My wife and I have stayed at his home. I consider him a dear friend. I consider his family close to us. So I call Vi. So I think he'll know somebody that can put me in touch with Matt Leinart. So I get hold of Vi. And he's on the line. It's on a Sunday. And he says, I got a meeting to be in. I said, and Vi knows who I am, so I didn't have to take a long time to explain it. He knew I was genuinely wanting to help this person. I didn't want to help him so he'd be a client. I wanted to help him because that's what I do. So he says, you know, i got to be in a meeting. I'll get back with you. So all Sunday, I was like looking at my thing to see if I got the information. He said, 
I know who you, I'll give you the name of the guy you need to get a hold of. He told me his name is Deuce Latouille. Now, up to that point, I knew Deuce Latouille played on the Cardinals, and I'd seen him at a high school football game. But if he came into a lineup and said, you've got to pick out Steve Hardison or you die, he'd be dead. He wouldn't know me from anyone. So I'm just hoping I get a call from him. So I don't get a call. I get a text late at night on Sunday. This is from Vice Sikahima. He says, here's Deuce's phone number. You can call him or text him. So Sunday night, he's not going to know who I am. I call him up on the phone. I get his, get his message. Do they still call it a message machine or does that show that I'm a dinosaur or whatever that answered the phone? I leave him a message and I say, Deuce, my name's Steve Hardison. And I told him what I just told you. I told him I read the paper. I wondered where Matt Leinart was. I think he could be helped. If I could get, if I could get in the same room with Matt, because I can't do what I do on the phone. I have to have a human being with me. I need to see him. So I'm telling, I'm leaving this message. So if you can hook me up with him, I'd like to help him. The next day, which is now Monday, Deuce and I ping pong calls. He calls me late Monday night, which would be Labor Day. Thank you all for staying here with me. Stay with this. I promise you it's worth your time. I'm giving you enough background so it'll make sense what happened. This is not about Deuce. It's not about me. It's about the guy or gal sitting in your chair. And you will see that, I promise you. Please keep your mind in this room. So we're together as a family. We're having dinner. I walk out to go to the bathroom. I come back. My daughter says, hey, your phone rang, but I didn't know if you wanted me to answer it. So I answered, you know, called a message, and it's Deuce Latouille, so I missed him. So I dial him back, and while I'm leaving him a message, he calls back in on my line. So I say, this is Steve. He says, Steve, Deuce Latouille, what's up, bro? And I, I say, did you listen to my message? Did you hear what I said? And it was kind of a yes, but you knew it didn't happen. Do you know what I mean? This did not, he did not listen to my message. He wouldn't ask me what he's asking me. So I rebuilt the whole thing. I told him what I wanted to do. So I'm telling this story over and over again to try to get to this Matt Leinert. If I could just get in a room with him. And so Deuce says, oh, so you only do this, you only do this face to face. I said, yes. He said, well, you won't be able to help Matt Leinert then because he's gone to Texas. He's with the Houston Texans. Now that wasn't in the paper. So this is information he has before we had it. And so I said, thanks a lot. I appreciate Vi giving me your number. I appreciate you calling me. What I will do is I will call Vi and tell him thanks. So thanks a lot, Deuce. And I'm ready to say goodbye to this guy. He says to me, would you do with and for me what you were going to do with and for Matt Leinart? This is how this happened. I'm ready to hang the phone up and say goodbye. I said, what do you mean? He says, would you help me? Man, that's like music to my ears. My life is about helping. Like somebody wants my help, I got it. So I said, tell me your schedule. And he said, we practice all day today on Labor Day. He said, I get one day off a week, it's, it's Tuesday. I said, here's what I'll do, so I'll make you a promise. If you will go out into the future and pick a Tuesday that works for you and find one that works where we could be together two to three hours and get back with me, I'll get a time when we can be together on a Tuesday. Now I have clients on Tuesdays and they come, some come from out of the country, come, some come from out of the state, some are right locally. So I said, I'd have to, it would depend what Tuesday you're talking about, and I promise you I'll do that with you. And, and I said, do you understand our agreement? And I barely know him, but I like to make sure people are clear what I'm going to do and what I'm not going to do. And he said, yeah, you want me to figure out a time where we can get together, you want me to call you, and you'll give me two or three hours. I said, that's, that's right. And he says, I said, do you have any other questions? He said, I just have one. Do you know what tomorrow is? And I said, it's Tuesday. He says, can we get together tomorrow? I like that too. I like that a lot. And then I said, you know, I have, I have two clients tomorrow. Tomorrow probably wouldn't be that good. Can I come over tonight? I don't even know where he's calling from. 
I do not know where he's calling from. He wants to know if he can come over. I said, you know, we have family over for dinner. That wouldn't be good. But I'll tell you what. If you come over tomorrow between this time and this time, and you need to be on time, and we need to end on time, then I'll work with you tomorrow. And he said to me, and I'm going to tell you ahead of time, I like this too. Tell me where to be and what time, and I'll be there. And so I told him, be here at X time, and we're going to finish at Y time. If you're not here before X time, I won't be spending any time with you. Be here on time. And then I joked a little bit. I said, sometimes I understand you don't wear wristwatches, and time is a different factor for you. Don't do that with me. So, on September 7th, at one minute before X, I go to my front door. Ding dong. I open up the door. How many of you have ever seen someone six foot four, wink, wink, nod, nod, 386 pounds? This is a 5X jersey. This is his literal jersey. This is what he wears. That is standing at my front door. I open the, when I open the door and I look at it, I, I really thought, and I got a son in law here who's got some good 20, 20 inch arms here, and he looks like a weenie, wimp, what do you call it? Just a dinky dude compared to this guy that's standing out there. Deuce looks like he has legs coming out of his arm sockets. They look like legs. I mean, they're huge. And I looked down at his calves and I thought, those are his. They're, they're hooked onto his leg. Those are big. <laughs> he, he walks in and he goes to hand me his hand. And I said, look, if I'm going to do work with you, I don't do shaking hands. Can I give you a hug? And he said, sure. How many of you hug somebody you can't get all the way around? <laughs> this guy's big. And I hug him and I say, come on in and have a seat. I'm telling you, the next 45 minutes I spent was like being in heaven. This guy sits in my living room. I, I was fed by a man who understands God, nature, people, love, family. He tells me about coming from Tonga and what Tonga was like. He tells me about coming to America. He talks about his wife. He talks about his children. He talks about wanting more children. He talks about a violent accident that killed his younger sister, that put his father in a long-term coma and his brother in a coma. He talks about the king of Tonga. I've never heard anyone in my life talk about another living person like Deuce Latui talked about the king of Tonga. It was an amazing experience. For about 45 minutes we sat there and this huge man in spirit and in heart and in body began to cry. Tears coming down his eyes. And he said, would you please do with me whatever you were going to do with Matt Leinart? And I said, Deuce, I can't do with you what I was going to do with Matt Leinart. Because you're not Matt Leinart. I can do with you what we can do with you, Deuce. But let's go out in my office. So we walk out. It's out in my backyard. We go to get in my office. I'm walking him to my office. And I really don't know this man I'm with. Like, you would know someone like this. But I am in love with this guy. He owns my heart. I feel like I've known him forever. As we walked to my office, I said, Deuce, I need to tell you something. Where I do my work is, for me, is the most sacred place on earth. Because what I do in this office with people is we really look at who they really are. He opens, I open up the office to have him go in. He starts to step into my office. He backs out. He wants to know what it is that he senses. He takes off his shoes. Takes his shoes off and goes in and sits down in my couch. Couch could hold four people and one and a half Deuce Latouis. <laughs> he sits in my couch and he begins to look around my office because everything in my office is something someone created. A picture of Christ penciled by a Christian, a statue of Buddha, praying hands, angels. Well, you know, I, I, I'm open for people to have plenty of ways to believe. I don't have the right way. And so I got everything. And here's, he's looking like this. I've got a Tibetan bowl from the Dalai Lama sitting in the corner. 
given to me by a very good friend and client. So he said, what do you do in here? And I said, we create miracles. We create miracles in this room. I said, do you have anything else you want to tell me before we begin? And he talked for another 45 minutes. And it was like being in heaven again for 45 minutes. It was unbelievable what he shared, what he thought, how he felt. And I could see a few things that would stop him from excelling in his life. We never talked about football in all that time of wherever we're up to. If you took 45, I guess that's an hour and a half. And then he shared some very intimate things with me that I, I regard as like treasured in my life. That I would, someone would be, trust me that much to talk to me. And then I said to him, do you have anything else you want to say? And he says, no, nope. let's do whatever it is you do. I said, okay. I'm going to borrow you, Chris, if that's okay. We're gonna, I'm going to use you if that'll be all right. I want to tell you, somebody hand him a 76 jersey so he can put one on, give him an extra large or whatever. It's Chris Doris right there. He, he'll, he'll meet him, well, he'll look good. And look, like Kenny likes to wear that extra small to get those arms to look big. I love you, Kenny. So he's sitting across from me. And again, as I'm looking over there, I'm having a little bit of a time trying to stay with it because I've never seen anything this big. And I mean, I've got to get my mind there. It's like, he's big. He's sitting back on the couch, but his chest is coming clear out. He's, um, I'm just kind of a skinny guy, but I, I weigh 220. He weighs 386. Nod, nod, wink, wink. He's like that. So I'm sitting across from him, and I'm, there's no desk in my office. It's just me and him, and I'm sitting knee, knee to knee with him. And he says, no, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. And I'm thinking, okay. So do I have two chairs? There's two chairs. Come on up, Chris. Do not try this at home. And again, I'm not saying any of you should do this. This isn't a technique. This is what became present in being totally in love with another human being, wanting to help that human being see something. And if what I could have done at that time is to cut one of my toes and drained it so he'd see it, I would have cut my toe and drained it. And I mean that with all my heart. So we're sitting like this. Is this okay with your film group? We're sitting like this, and sorry for those of you who can't see me over there. We're sitting like this. <clears throat> I'm in a chair that, you know, has got a back on it. He's on the couch. And I say, Deuce, I just have one question for you. It's the first time anything about football even came up. And I didn't ask him about football because I was interested in football. Because I don't care if I get somebody's autograph or if I go to a game. It doesn't matter to me. So I look over at him and I say, I just have one question for you, Deuce. Can I ask you that? And he said, yes. And I looked at him. Deuce, who is the best offensive lineman in the NFL? Thanks for answering my question, Deuce. I appreciate it. And he says to me, I didn't answer your question. I said, oh, no, you did. It was so loud. It was, I could hear it in the whole office. He said, I'm confused. What are you talking about? I didn't answer your question. I said, Deuce, stay there. I said, it's not hanging up here. It's not, it's not hanging from one of these. It's not in my walls. The answer is not over here. I'm just wondering if, could you find any of the answer in here anywhere? He said, you're confusing me. I said, okay. So we're going to change this just a little bit, Deuce. We're going to do something different. So could you pretend that you're the best offensive lineman in the NFL? And, and how he reacted at that time would be how a, a good-looking woman or a very bright guy, or however you want to do it, you say something and they dodge it. You say, you say to a guy, hey, you're, you're brighter than Einstein, or you're really intelligent. And, and they don't feel intelligent, so they go, oh, not me, and they dodge it. Or you're saying to a good-looking gal, hey, you're beautiful. And she's like, who, me? Well, when I say, could you pretend you're the best offensive lineman in the NFL, he looked like he was dodging a defensive tackle. Like, 
are you talking to me? He couldn't, I said, can you pretend that? He couldn't pretend. He couldn't pretend it. I said, we're going to have to change the game, Deuce. Okay, Deuce, we're going to do this again. Now, you need to know I'm about three hours with him. About ten minutes to one coming up, I got a CEO from a billion-dollar company in creation that's going to be walking in. And I told Deuce we need to be done at a certain time. We're getting close to the certain time. So I said, we're going to play a new game, Deuce. Here's the, is everybody still in the room? Anybody going to sleep? Okay, any of those people that don't want to hear a loud noise or, you know, this guy looks like he's the, the axe murderer or whatever, go to the exits quick. So I said we're going to do a different ga game, Deuce. Here's the game we're going to play. I'm going to pretend to be you, and I want you to pretend to be me. When you pretend to be me, all you need to do is you need to ask me, Deuce, who the best offensive lineman in the NFL is. And I'll answer you. We don't do it till I, I'm going to set this all up so you understand it, make sure you're really clear about it, Deuce. And I'm not talking down to him. I'm wanting to make sure we're clear about what's going on. You know, a lot of people think I'm talking down to him. I'm just trying to communicate. You know, there's nothing worse than not understanding what's going on and have somebody go somewhere. So I said, <clears throat> so who, who are you going to pretend to be? And what are you going to ask me? I'm going to ask you, Deuce, who is the best offensive lineman in the NFL? Yes. And, and who am I going to be? You're going to be me. Yes. And what am I going to believe? That you're the best offensive lineman. That's right. That's, that's the game we're going to play, Deuce. You're going to be me, and you're going to ask who the best offensive lineman in the NFL. I'm going to be you, except I'm actually going to believe that I am the best offensive lineman in the NFL. Are you clear about that, Deuce? Good. We're going to go back five minutes. We're going to go back in history five minutes. We're going to sit down, and you're going to ask me that question. I'm going to be you. You clear what you're going to do? Okay. Go ahead and ask me what I just asked you to. If you had any idea who I was, you wouldn't ask me such a stupid question. <laughs> then I kicked that chair out of the way. Stay there. I kicked that chair, my office chair, out of the way, and I said, Listen, I am Deuce Latoui, and I am the best offensive lineman in the NFL. That's who I am. Because if you could hear me, let me tell you what you could do. I don't care who's in the huddle. Bart Starr, Joe Namath, Blake Murdoch, Max Hall, Kurt Warner, any of them. And I know you're not supposed to talk in the huddle. This Deuce Latouille would inside. It's fourth and one. If we make this first down, we continue keeping the ball. Or it's fourth and one, we win the game. And I'm Deuce Latouille. And I am the best offensive lineman in the National Football League. So when I go to the huddle and they say it's fourth and one, and I know I'm still not supposed to talk, here's what's going on inside me. And I don't care who the quarterback is. Run a ride, 34 search right at my backside. That's a play to the right, right over number 76. I said, Deuce, we're out of time. I'm done. So he stands up. You can go back to Thank you very much. <clears throat> I say, Deuce, we're out of time. And he stands up reverently as he is, a reverent man. And he looks at me like, what the hell was that? And he goes out and he puts those feet in those shoes. And while I was in that office with him, as part of that conversation, I said, if you ever got inside you who you could be, it would be what I call a personal internal commitment. And getting that inside you would operate everything you do. And I said, hey, Deuce, you know when I told you about that in the office? I'm going to show you one of those as I exit you. 
And he says, show me one of what? And I said, I'm going to show you a personal internal commitment in action. He says, what do you mean? I says, I don't care what time of day it is, when it is, what day of the week it is. When we go in my house, I can tell you what my wife will be doing. I said, she will either have earphones in and she'll be listening to the talk. She'll be reading this scriptures that she loves. She'll be writing. It'll be something to do with her passion. And so I take Deuce Latouille into my home. I take him through my bedroom. I take him past my bed. I take him into my wife's office. And there you got everything in the world out there she's studying. And I said, Amy, this is Deuce Latouille. Deuce, this is my wife, Amy. And then I get about that far from his face. And I said, see, what has her do everything is what she knows on the inside. If you ever got who you could be, your football world would look like this, except it would be football. Thanks, Amy. Let's go, Deuce. And I walk him out. And I can tell you, every step he takes, his mind is expanding. He's seen something he never saw before. And I can feel it, and I can sense it. Take him out to the front. I go to get him in this huge truck he drives, and his truck has a train horn, literally from a train. Ah! It's like a train horn. It's this huge truck, huge guy in a train horn. And we get to the edge of his truck, and he turns around and he says to me, I want, I want you to fly to St. Louis on Sunday to watch me play football. Then I want you to go to all my away games. Then I want you to come to all the home games. We can put you up with the team. I said, Deuce, you can count on I won't be doing that. I'm not interested in watching you play football. You don't even know who you are. That would be a waste of my time. Not that, as him as a human being, but what he's wanting me to go for, I, I could go to high school and see that. Then I said, I'll make you one deal, Deuce. And here's the deal I'm gonna make with everyone in this audience. At the end of this, I'm gonna ask you to do the same kind of thing with yourself I asked Deuce to do. I said, I want you to get in that big truck, Deuce. I want you to drive away somewhere and sit quietly. I want you to sit in that big truck and think about what just happened for three and a half hours at my house, from the living room, the walk out there, the conversation and everything. I want you to think about it. I want you to go inside and think about it. Then I want you to do this. I want you to go over to my website. Now, this is the first time he actually knows kind of what I do or who I am. I hand him a card and I circle. I say, go to this website. But don't go to that website and read it like it's about me. Or don't read it about the people who wrote what they wrote about me. Read it like it's you and see what you could learn from what they said about their experience with me. But have it be about you. So if you go read it about me, you're going to miss it. If you read it about them, you're going to miss it. Go read it if it's about you. So here's our deal. You go out in your truck. You go think. You go home and do it when you can saute in my website. Not surf it. If you get back with me and you find out who you are, I'll cut you this deal. I teach Sunday school on Sunday. I'll have my wife substitute teach on that Sunday, and I'll go to your first home game. And if you don't want to do that, just keep driving in your truck. It was nice meeting you. The next client that I have is a CEO of a company, and the literal next client. And I, he said, who was that big guy? And I tell him, and he says, what happened? And I Gave him the short version of it. And he says, I'd be real interested if you ever hear back from him. Now, here's what I want to share with you. Before you open those envelopes, please, when you open the envelopes, don't get lost in the content. I want you to pull out just one. Let me, let me finish instructing you before you do it. I want you to pull out one thing in there. And it will be a copy of the email that Deuce Latouille sent me that night. So he was sautéing for 13 hours. And then he sent me an email that I submit to you will alter the way in which we in the world live. And I mean the entire world. So I want you to go there and pull out a document and it's, it's from Deuce to me and it's in its exact form. It's a yellow document. Don't look at any of their stuff. Don't get caught with what's there. Just get that document. And, and hold it up so I know you've got it. Hold it up high in the air. Now look around and see if somebody doesn't have a document, help them find it. Or if you need a document, get one for someone. Is there, 
Now put yours down, and if you don't have one, put your arm up so we can get one to you. There's two right here. There's two over there. There's two up front. That's six. I went to Clearfield High. That's eight over there. Okay. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Don't read it until we get everybody together. Raise your hands up if you don't have one. I, I submit to you that these few words on this piece of paper w will literally alter who Deuce will be forever. And if you get it for yourself, same with you, just in a different way. Hold your hand up till you get one. One here in the middle. So I finish with two different clients. Monday night, I go into my computer. Oh, I have dinner, and I go into my computer about 10, 15. And there's this email from this Deuce Latouille that kind of roughed me up earlier in the day. And, uh, and as soon as I saw it and I read it, the impact it had on me to know what would be possible working with this man was so great. I felt it everywhere you could feel it beyond my body and my mind and my spirit and my soul and everything. The first thing I did, let's see, who, who in here, well, maybe I better read it. I may be getting out of bounds with what's the crew. Okay, so we're going to read this. This is dated September 7th, 2010, 9.50 p.m. and 50 seconds. A few things I wrote down after our session and going on your website. This has locked my future and secured my goals. The best in the game. The best offensive lineman in the NFL. Best pro bowler there is. Best at my craft. Best on the team. Captain paid. I am. The scary thing is this isn't enough for me, nor good enough. Love you, brother. I want, to, I want you to witness this at every game, at every play. Please let me know. Please let me have you at every game you are able to make. It will bless my life to know you're behind me literally watching my every move. Again, the best in the game, the best offensive lineman in the NFL, best pro bowler there is, best at my craft, best on the team, captain, paid, I am. Ofa Adu, TBO, LIT, NFL. TBO, LIT, NFL got born, 9.50 and 50 seconds p.m. That man found who he was going to be as a football player. It has expanded to his personal life, to his marriage, to how he treats his kids, to how he lives, to how he looks, to how he does everything. That's a personal internal commitment that he made. When I read that on that screen, do you know what that means to do that? The first thing I did is I wrote him back. Powerful like you, Deuce. So let it be written, so let it be done. The second thing I did is I shared it with the CEO. When I sent it to the CEO, I've been working with the CEO since March. The CEO writes back and declares what he's going to do. He's working with an $18 million company. He writes back, I am a God-serving man, a great father, and the CEO of a billion dollar software company called Infusionsoft. Deuce Latouille inspired that CEO right out of his pants. I shared the Deuce Latouille story with everybody I could. Most of the time it was about an hour and everybody I shared it with had some kind of impact. It's on the internet right now. Somebody read that with a soft heart and understood the kind of commitment. Do you realize what kind of commitment he's making? He's making a commitment on the world stage. Do you know other people can go read that? On the, other football players can go read that? This is like a serious commitment. I submit to you that what you're holding in your hand, and if any of you have been on the website, and again, everything that's happened, when I went to that little restaurant and had that conversation, this man put up that sign, somebody else did the website, somebody else came up with that. The people that do the website, they're not even, they don't even take money. Can, you can't pay them. They're so inspired by what the story is. It's going a lot of places. It's called personal internal commitment, being connected with something you really want to do, finding out what it is and actually committing to it. <laughs> I'm going to read something by W.H. Murray. Most of you have probably heard this. Is everybody here? Yes. Good. This is about you. This is for you. I need nothing. The minute one definitely commits to oneself, then providence moves to. All sorts of things occur to help one that would never otherwise have occurred. A whole stream of events issue from the decision, raising in one's favor all manner of unforeseen incidents and meetings and material assistance, which no man could have dreamed would have come this way. Deuce Latouille sends that to me, 9.50 and 50 seconds. I share it with the man, it alters the world. 
I share it with another person, it alters the world. There was a gentleman who had an agreement to call me and complete something about a common person we knew. He calls me at night. He tells me what he was calling about. At the end, I say to him, I've had a miracle happen in my life. I would like to tell you about it. He says, I've got a few minutes now. I said, mm, I take an hour. He said, I got an hour. So I tell him the Deuce Latouille story. When one is committed, the world finds its way to the commitment. It's like a black hole. Everything you need finds your way to the commitment. It is heavier than gravity. Try it. So I began to speak to Will Keeper, and I've met him once in my life. And I say, Will, let me tell you what happened. And I tell him what I just told you. And he says, you are not going to believe this. And I said, what? He said, I'll send you an email. I don't even believe this. So I get an email from him. This is the literal email from him. This is September 9th. When did I meet with Deuce Latouille? How long is that? This isn't even 48 hours. And this is what commitment does. Steve, I just shared with my wife Pamela the Deuce story. The Deuce story. She told me that her husband, now deceased, went to Tonga in 2007 when his planned coronation was announced and stayed at the palace with him for two weeks. My wife has known the king, then the crown prince, for 20 years. Visited him in Tonga, stayed at the palace, went to the Tongan Millennium Celebration, and he visited her family in New York three or four times a year for many years. She said that if we invited His Highness to our home for Thanksgiving, he might well come. If Deuce is interested, and you and your family might be interested, and there is or isn't a game around that time, it could make a powerful connection for all. I'll leave it to you, brother. Ofa adu. Let me tell you what. Get seriously committed. You can bring the king to you. And I'm not joking. Will Keeper lives in Paradise Valley, Arizona. And if everything goes as planned, the king of Tonga will be there for Thanksgiving. And what's so crazy about it is when Deuce said, hey, I want you to go to every game, I decided I'd go check out the schedule. Not that I'm going to go to every game. I'm just curious who he's playing. And so I knew that on November 30th, not 29th, that he's playing a Monday night football game, nationally televised in Phoenix against the San Francisco 49ers. So I think, wow, this is interesting. Imagine this family that I know all of one hour <laughs> is now inviting the king of Tonga to their home and my family and Deuce. It's pretty, this is pretty good stuff, isn't it? So, so I think, I say, wow, you know what, Will? What's so interesting is we play at home that same week. We could have Thanksgiving giving dinner. We could have the king of Tonga to the Monday Night Football. And, he, and the king of Tonga could watch the best offensive lineman in the NFL. Two days old is the, this being spoken. Except get, Deuce has got it in him. So I can really go to action. When there's a powerful commitment someone's got, you can do a lot of stuff with it. Listen, commitment rocks the world. Notice those who are committed, what's happening around them. Notice what Deuce Latouille created. 54 days ago, he spoke that when he wrote it. 54 days ago. 21 days ago, Julie called and asked if I'd come here. Look around you. That is what commitment does. So, one of the pieces about the Deuce Latouille story, and here's a little tidbit sideliner for somebody to go, hey, what could I get from that guy who coaches companies? Get this one. You want to tell your story more frequently than you do. If you sell commercial real estate, tell a few more people than you've been telling. If you want to be in love with your wife, tell her a few more times how beautiful she is. Tell your story a little more frequently. I couldn't find enough people to tell my story to. My wife got rear-ended, so I'm taking her car over to get it estimated. I'm driving in my car and I'm thinking, who else could benefit from the Deuce Latouille story? I want nothing. I'm not telling them something so I can get something. I'm telling them something because if they listen, they'll get something. 
So I think of this lady that I know that writes. And I thought, man, if she knew this was happening, she could write about it. So I call her up. I'm on the freeway in a car that's got the back end thinged in. I'm going to go get an appraisal for my wife. And so I call her on the phone. She answers, and I say her name, and I say, I've had a miracle happen in my life. I want to share it with you. She says, what happened? I said, you know, do you have a few minutes? And she said, yeah. I said, do you have an hour? I said, I'm not afraid to spend a little time. She said, yes. So I pull off the freeway in Arizona. You've got to get under a tree. It's hot. So I park under a tree. Hold on, let me tell you what happened to the hotel this morning. I said to the guy, hey, what's it going to be like today? He says, oh, it's going to be real warm. I said, how warm? I said, 58. Hey, my wife drinks hot chocolate at 85. <laughs> so I pull underneath this tree, and I begin to tell this lady what's happened, including this thing about the king of, England, or the king of Tonga. And so I'm getting about as far telling her the story as I did with Will Keeper, and she says, I can't believe it. We were in a meeting the other day. We were talking about Deuce Latui, whether he could be the person who lights the ceremony of the temple lights at the Mesa Temple. If you could ask him to do that, that would be just crazy. Now, I'm going to see him the next day. He decided to come and hang around me. So I'm going to see him the next day. I says, I'll ask him. So the next day, I talked to him about the king coming from Tonga and about him lighting all this stuff up. And so... And then, and then this, and, and you can go to the website and see this. You can, well, you could have. The actual document of the story is there, and it's, it says um, that not only will the king of Tonga be for Thanksgiving dinner, Monday night football, but he's going to go over and light, light these temple lights up, which is a big deal where we live at. That's a big thing, and that, it'd be like somebody lighting up the Salt Lake City temple lights. And so this is all going to happen. It's all done. This is happening. Fly down and see. Deuce Latouille's slamming on the lights. I could go on and on and on and on, and I'm not joking. I got 140 pages of things that have happened like that. This is what happens with commitment. You want something to shift in your marriage? You want something to shift in what's going on where you work? You want something to shift at school? Get committed. Get committed inside. Come up with something. Lindsay Lohan, that's how he described himself. Deuce Latui does not go to training camp. He's the only cardinal that didn't go to training camp. Shows up 40 to 60 pounds overweight. When they interview him, he says, I'm the Lindsay Lohan of the Arizona Cardinals. Fast forward it. Go to Sunday's paper. In the paper in print, Deuce Latui is the best offensive lineman on the Cardinals. Mark my words. Write them down. You got it on tape. He will be a pro bowler. He will sign a contract that will blow the world away. If he's not the highest paid lineman ever, I'll be surprised. He got who he wants to be, but it's not limited to football. Talk to his wife, Pua. She got a new husband. Talk to his kids. Talk to people that know him. TBO, LIT, NFL is not about football. We joke. I can hardly speak English, and he's tried to teach me a little Tongan. And I don't even know that I still have it. Ofa adu, close, is, you know, loving you, love you. So here's what Deuce and I made up that TBO, LIT, NFL is Tongan for personal inner commitment. It's Tongan. Ofa Atu, TBO, LIT, NFL. I love personal inner commitment. Like made up. Huh? Pretty good, huh? Nothing, something. Nothing, something. How would you like to have nothing and something? Would you? Because you can. All you got to do is look in a little bit. What's over there untapped? What's inside of you that you're the Lindsay Lohan of whatever's going on? You know, and I've told this story and somebody said, well, what about Lindsay Lohan? I says, I'm actually trying to get in contact with her because if I could have a conversation, we'd have her life improved. So I'm not against Lindsay Lohan. It's Deuce that said he was the Lindsay Lohan. And maybe you're Lindsay Lohan in an area of your life. Maybe you're spectacular in another area. What would you like to get? Somebody needs to let me know what the time is because I have no idea what time we're at. 
because I'd like to share some other things if we have a minute. What, where are we at on the time? Are we okay with our time? Okay. Are, is everybody still with me? Is, is there anybody not here? That's interesting. You know, if they answered that, it'd be weird, wouldn't it? Okay, so let's... <clears throat> so, so Deuce made a powerful commitment. You know how sometimes we make commitments and we kind of don't tell anybody? Man, he shot this over to me. And I sent him copies of who I shot it to. And you know why I wanted to shoot more copies around? I wanted to commit the dude. Failure to commit is the high cost of low living. Both ways. Failure to commit yourself, failure to commit someone else. Who in this room has been committed by me to be here today? Is, is, is Bill here? Is Bill Burke in the room? Bill, just stand up for a second. I, I love this man dearly. And I don't say I love somebody. I, I mean, I love this man. Thanks, Bill. I, it was Thursday, I believe. And again, forgive me. I got so many dates and times. I'm close. Could have been Friday. Could have been Wednesday. I called Bill up on Thursday-ish. And I want him to be here. I don't want him to be here for me. I've coached him. I've worked with him. Guess, guess, guess who I want him to be here for? For him. I want him to be here for him. So I leave a message early in the morning. I'm still sleeping. I wake up and I do a little voicemail and a little text. Call me as soon as you get this. And he calls me. And it was about a quarter to seven, I think. And he's like, hey, what's up? And I say to him, so what are you doing on Saturday? And this guy's doing stuff. It's not like, oh, schedule's open, you want to go some? So he says, why? I says, because I'd like you to be in Salt Lake City at uh, 2.30 to 4.30. I'm not trying to be mean or bossy, but I'm promising you, wherever he would be not here, won't do what this would do for him. So we have a 15-minute conversation. If somebody was watching me from the other side, they'd say, that Hardison guy doesn't like that Bill Burke guy. Did you l listen to what he just said to him? I say, Bill... What, you know, what, here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to get a plane, fly to Salt Lake City. I'm going to be here at this time. Make sure you get there at this time. And he says to me something like, well, maybe, or okay. Or, and it went like that for about 12 minutes. And then we get to a place where I said, and I can't tell you all the words I said because my wife's in here. So I said, that's true, isn't it, Bill? I couldn't say all the words I said, could I, with my wife? That's right. So I said, uh, he kind of got to where he was saying okay, and I said, what the hell do you mean okay? You're either going to be there or you're not. What is this okay? Listen, you're powerful. If you want to be there, you can say you'll be there and you'll be there. There be Bill. I can tell you, his world will alter from the commitment he came to be here. He will get something so powerful out of this. And then he brought other people with him. So you make a commitment... Failure to commit is the high cost of low living. Not committing yourself and not committing other people. Here's something I sent to Deuce. And like I say, if there's anything here that's not your religion, throw it out. I love this. I sent this to Deuce. This is September 10th. Now, how long have I known Deuce? How many hours is that? I don't even have all 72 of them yet. Deuce, there is a powerful statement in 2 Corinthians 2.3, page 1462, that offers an excellent instruction on what you can do with this powerful commitment you have made regarding TBO, LIT, NFL. The scripture reads, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in the fleshy tables of the heart. You need to take what you have written in ink below, and it's this document you all have. You need to take what you have written in ink below and seek it into the fleshy tables of your heart. Please take a quiet moment and read what you, have, what you wrote, and I call it Deuce's personal internal commitment, and sink it into the fleshy tables of your huge and loving heart. Now, the Deuce Latouille story has been shared around the globe. That doesn't mean you couldn't share it. In fact, what I would ask you to do 
And I'm going to say it now rather than the end of what I speak in case some of you decide to bail out of here. And we have people here to tackle you, actually. No. <laughs> I would ask you that when we're complete, that you go somewhere where you're not in a rush. And if you're busy tonight, get it tomorrow. But go somewhere where you're not in a rush. Sit within yourself and ask, what is it I want to be committed to? What is it I could commit to? And look inside to see and be quiet enough, long enough to see something. Then when you do, and I do not need you as a client, I have more clients than I can handle. I need you to see something in you. Go to my website, and it's on there somewhere, and read the experiences of people, including Deuce Latui, but don't read about me, and don't read about Deuce, read about you, have a pad of paper, and you might be able to see something that you can see that you could do in your life. Write it down. Come up with a personal, internal commitment of your own. You don't have to. You're not bad if you don't. You're not good if you do. If you don't, you're not as committed as you could be if you're committed. And I can tell you, someone committed to something gets more done than someone not committed. You follow the math? It's pretty good math. So now here's, here's something that came from London. Will you signal to me? What, am I, what do I need to know? Okay. Everything here is strategically planned. This is from a business owner in London. So he read the Deuce Latouille story. And, and, and by the way, I can't, I can't deduct my name from everything because I'm in the middle of it. So if I'm reading it, some of you think, well, he's puffy. Leave me alone. I'm just trying to share with you. Hi, Steve. This is from London. You, sir, are magic in motion. That document belongs deep in the fleshy tables of every heart. I have gone through it three times, made notes and carry a small black notebook that has my own T-B-O-L-I-T NFL version in it. And it's not at all surprising that if every re reading this document doesn't alter, it doesn't create a new personal internal commitment. How many of you have gone to T-B-O-L-I-T NFL and actually read this story? Okay? So here's what I'm asking the rest of you to do. And you don't have to. I'm just wanting to commit you to do it. Go home, go to TBO, LITNFL.com, and read the Deuce Latouille story. Don't skim it, read it. And have it answer for you, what is it I need to commit to? And if at the end you don't need to commit to anything, then don't. But you might be surprised what happens. He says, because if they do, it will set the world on fire. Go you, go Deuce, go all who get it, your friend. P.S. Steve, what was the conversation you had with Deuce in those three to four hours where he then came back and created this powerful commitment? He doesn't know. I, I am the luckiest man in the world. So what I'm going to ask you to do is go read that. Sit with yourself. If you don't want to go to my website, don't. I say it would assist you. Then write something down. And, and how about, can you see the generosity of all the people that have served? There, there have been people that Julie called up and said, we need help here, and they sent $5,000. They sent $3,000. They did this, they did this, they did this. The, can you see the generosity in that? You, you have stuff in your little envelopes that clients I've worked with have given to you. They paid for them. So you can have some stuff in those, in those envelopes. So if you listen to them and read them, it'll be really useful to you. Here's what I ask you to do. Not in return for it. I just ask you to do it. After you read TBO, LIT, NFL, and if it touches you anywhere, be a little less stingy. Think, who do I know in Canada? Who do I know in Ireland? Oh, I remember I was in the service in Yugoslavia. Who could I send this to? And don't be stingy. Send it to different countries. Send it to different states. Send it everywhere. Because I promise you, if people read it, it will alter literally the world. Look what's happened in 54 days. I could read, I'm not kidding, you can come up and look at these. I've got CEOs, I've got letters from housewives, I've got letters from all over. I've read this story, here's what I'm doing. Do you know what happens when the water rises? All the boats go up. 
Let's take the water up just a notch. So my request, especially some of you that, you know, maybe some of you lived in the Polynesian Islands, somebody's from Hawaii, somebody's from Tonga, send it out there. Somebody knows somebody in Cape Canaveral, send it there. If you've been on a mission to Argentina, send it there. If you've got buddies somewhere else, send it there. What, you know how long it takes you? Read a story, press a few buttons, lift someone's world. There are some people that have read that story, and I'll just speak it to you rather than read it. There's a guy working. There was a guy that came to that Kingsfish restaurant. He was going to quit where he worked. He's going to quit. He heard what we talked about, and he wrote a letter to his CEO and to me, and a commitment to his wife of what kind of husband he'd be, what kind of leader he'd be, what kind of results he would produce, based on hearing that story. So those are some of my requests. Read TBO, LIT, NFL. Sit with yourself. Share it with somebody. Somebody someplace on the planet. And I'm asking you to get creative. If you know somebody in all 50 states, send it to all 50 of them. If you know somebody in a different country, if you've got a strange country, look, they don't have roads some places, and they have internet. Do you hear me? This room, Salt Lake City, on this date, could actually raise the water level for the planet by simply sharing a little bit. This is a gentleman named Michael Neal. He has graciously, um, you, you've, you've got some stickers in those little bags of yours or packages. Uh, he paid four or five dollars a piece to give every one of you those. And it's, guess what it says on the, the decal? Are they in the bag? Here, here's what it says. This, this says TBO, L-I-T, N-F-L. It's a decal. My kids said to me, I drive a really nice car. The only thing I really own that's nice is a nice car. I like to have a clean car. And you know if I lived in Utah, I'd buy it at Murdoch Chevrolet. Blake and I went to high school together. I honor and love him. He is one of the greatest leaders I ever met. My wife's last name is Blake, and I named my son Blake. But I got to do it for two reasons. And he's one of them. So if you're not going to put this on your car, don't take it. Give it to somebody else. Because somebody will say, what is T-B-O-L-I-T-N-F-L? I'm, I'm down at a gas station in Arizona. I, I've got this on the back of my Lexus. And a guy pulls up in an M5 BMW, souped up, saying, he says, what's that? And I say, that's T-B-O-L-I-T-N-F-L. So I, I say that. What is it? And I say... So I engage in a conversation. I share with him about Deuce. I say, what's going on? I say, go read this website. I don't know the guy, 120 seconds. He drives out in his $130,000 car, just on his back window. You know why I wanted to get that to him? Guess how many people are going to ask him what this is? Guess how much water goes up? Guess what happens when the water goes up, folks? Guess whose boat goes up? Everybody's boat. For those of you who drive a big vehicle, Hummer owners, Escalades, I'm going to give you an actual Deuce Latouille size TBO, <laughs> L-I-T, NFL. You need to know this thing reflects. I mean, people are going to honk at you. Now picture, we got five or six hundred, whatever many people are here. The, the real important person we got here is you. So just whoever I'm talking to in the seat. Imagine if everybody put these on their car. My kid said to me, Dad, I've never seen you put a decal on your car my whole life. I said, there's never been a decal that meant so much as what this decal means to me. This means so much to me. This means personal inner community. This means, this means a, a, a man is playing on the hugest stage in the world in athletics, saying this is who he's going to be. He declared to be the captain. And guess what? He's the right guard. Guess who the captain of the team is? The center. Do you get this? You can live from being a captain inside you. I've got one here that's a lady who says, I'm going to be the, be the best mother in the world. That's not a challenge to the rest of you. What happened if every mother in here decided to be the best mother in the world? You know how many, I coach for a living. Do you know how many coaches I've gotten that wrote me things that says, I'm going to be the best coach in the world. I say, hallelujah. Let's have 100, 200, 400. 
So, Michael Neal paid for all those decals for you. Please don't throw it away. Put, put it somewhere. Give it to somebody who'll put it somewhere. Here's, here's a little, there are four or five business owners that, are, excuse me, four or five people that blog around the world and they've all picked up TBO, L-I-T-N-F-L. And I'm gonna read you directly from Michael Neal's blog. Is everybody still here? Does anyone wanna go home? Because if you really do, you ought to get up and go because I, I, I'm gonna get serious now. Go for the exits, baby. This is from Michael Neal. Those of you who know me personally know that I am an avid sports fan, and more specifically, a lifelong supporter of an American football franchise known for the past 40 years or so as the New England Patriots, which is why it might come as a surprise to you later this afternoon when I watch the Arizona Cardinals game with my eyes glued to the screen, and even more surprising if you notice that I will not so much be watching the game as the exploits of player number 76, a right guard named Deuce Latui. Deuce's declaration of himself as the best offensive lineman in the NFL, T-O-B, L-I-T, NFL. Who knows what that means in Tongan? Personal internal commitment. That's right. That's what it means in Tongan. Is neither arrogance nor self-promotion. Is it, a, it is a statement of commitment and intent. A commitment to who he wants to be in the world and the intention and willingness to take action to make it so. Over the first four games of the season, Deuce has been ranked the top offensive lineman three times and despite the struggles of his team, has come to national attention for the way he has been playing. Why is he playing like he's playing? The commitment, he's coming from being the best. He calls me, he says, Steve, he calls me coach, which is cool. I mean, it's a different kind of coach. I mean, it's like it's so endearing the way he says, hey, coach. It's just, I, oh, it's so good. He says, coach. He says, the, the grass doesn't look the same. He says, you know, and I lined up, and I'm not sure this wants to be on that video. Let's see if I got to go through that. He lines up against a guy. And this guy had been kind of hassling for a while across from each other, except now Deuce is coming across as the best offensive lineman in the NFL. Deuce calls me up and said, you know, I lined up against player X, and I looked up at him. So I pictured Deuce, you know, in the three-point stance. And he looks up at this guy, and he says, you are so lucky that we are on the same team. Because if you weren't, I would blitz and cream you so bad you wouldn't know it hit you. He gets in a fist fight with the other guy. I said, not a boy, let's go. See, because who he is, is the best offensive lineman in the NFL. Who he was, was Lindsey Lohan earlier. Which guy do you think blocks the best? 76 being Lindsey Lohan or 76 being the best offensive lineman? You tell me. Which father is the best? The one committed to his wife or the one that's like doesn't even know? This looks good to me. That looks good to me. Or one that's just committed to who he's with? You answer it. The math is really easy. The math is simple. So Michael Neal goes on to say, his secret, not in the sense that he won't tell, but in the sense that people can't see it until they experience it. Who do you think I would like to experience what he's talking about? You. You sit, look in, look in your chair. There's, just look down. There you are. You're sitting in it. That's who to experience this. Is perhaps best summed up in the famous words of author Mary Ann Williamson. Listen to this. And if you've heard it before, listen to it like you've never heard it before. Because the plane is going down, folks, if you don't get committed. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as, as, children, we, as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. This is not about Deuce Latouille. This is not about Steve Hardison. This is about the body sitting in your chair on your butt. As we let our light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. 
as we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Through a series of unseen incidents and meetings, Deuce Latouille will be sitting down to Thanksgiving dinner this year with a very special king, guest, the King of Tonga himself. A few days later, the king will be honored guest at the Monday night football game between the Cardinals and the 49ers. Deuce will also be turning the temple lights on in Mesa, Arizona. Better still, the Deuce Latouille story is still being written day by day in the way he lives, his life, and how he honors his commitment. And if you haven't realized it yet, this tip has nothing to do with a man named Deuce Latouille. It's all about you. Who are you, really? Who would you be willing to declare yourself to be if you weren't worried that your claiming your birthright might be disrespectful, disrespectful to your king, your family, or your God? What is the ultimate way to respect those who help make you who you are is to actually be who you are. If anyone listened to this beautiful song that was sung up here, oh my gosh. What if the ultimate way to respect those who help make you who you are was to actually be who you are, not just the human, but the being, not just the life, but the energy and intelligence behind it. To quote Marianne Williamson, God heard us. He sent help. He sent you. That's a blog. I could read you three or four blogs like that. Some going to 2,200 people, some going to 17,000 people. And then getting responses back. You remember I told you I called Vaisikahima? Yes? This would be yes. That would be no. Yes? Here's from Vi. Steve, amazing. Deuce is one of my favorite people in the world. I love him like a younger brother. He has a soft and good heart. Since he was a little boy, he has always wanted to do good and be good. He was a little boy when I was already at BYU, but I would see him and his siblings with their parents whenever I returned home. My parents were close to his parents. I remember my mother calling me and waking me up in, in my apartment in Provo crying with the news of their accident. It was a life-changing moment in their lives. Quick story. This is Vaisikahima. Deuce came two years ago to watch me in a preliminary exhibition fight before Conseco. Did you know that Vaisikahima fought Jose Conseco and took him out in the first round? Tough, cu tough cookie. He took the time to go to the Cardinals and ask for my old jersey, which he brought as a gift. Who thinks to do that? I was moved and touched by the jester. I have money and connections to do my, that myself. Yet he did, it, he did it knowing it probably wasn't something I'd go out and do from, out of my way to do. That's why I love the man. And there's so much more than that. He will be. T-B-O-L-I-T-N-F-L. I don't believe in coincidences. I believe when you called me asking to put you in touch with Deuce because you wanted to meet out, out to Matt Leinert, I had actually considered, after I sent you Deuce's number, whether it wasn't Deuce that could really benefit from your coaching. Where are our physicists? Who knows what a black hole is? You've heard of a black hole? Number 76 of the Arizona Cardinals has made a commitment that is so profound, it's like a black hole. His commitment is actually what has you sitting here and you don't even really know it. That's what started it. I often talk about a thing I call one action. One action. What's the one action? If Deuce Latui does not go home and think and write what he just wrote, none of this occurs. You, will not, you would not be sitting there right now. He does not get on it computer and write what he wrote and declare T-B-O-L-I-T NFL you would not be sitting there right now get that one action if when I got his email I don't communicate back with him and say to him powerful like you do so let it be written so let it be done and I just leave it in my computer who knows what would happen if I don't tell Will Keeper the story do you think Will accidentally is just going to come over to my house one day? I've seen him one hour and three months, and he's going to walk up to me and say, Hey, Steve, just thought you might want to know my wife, when she was married before me, is good friends with the king of Tonga. Do you think that's going to happen? Not in a million years. One action. I do not call Bill Burke. He's not sitting in that chair. 
I do not call Blake Murdoch. He may not be sitting in that chair. One action. One action. One action. Commitment creates a series of actions that are not generated if there's no commitment. TBO, LIT, NFL is all about commitment. You cannot see a more powerful example than what this man has done. If you go on the website, you will see things. When you go on this website, please click onto the face page book. Go over and become a member of Deuce Latouille's team, TBO, LIT, NFL. There is a thing at the top called personal internal commitment, and you can read them from around the world. If you decide to get one, post it. Share with us what you've decided to do. You'll be moved if you go read them. I brought them with me. I could read them. They're unbelievable from all around. I want to tell you how Deuce Latouille's impacted my own family. He, he doesn't take that one action. None of these other things happen the way they did. They may happen some other way, some other time. This is September 27th. How long have I known Deuce Latouille? Not even three weeks. Dear Deuce, it is almost 1 a.m. and I'm just finishing up watching the game. I taped it and watched every single play at least twice. I can hardly wait till Tuesday to be together and discuss the game in the extraordinary way you played it. There are multiple plays where you took out two guys. There was one play that you pancaked the defender which allowed us to get 24-yard pass completion. There are so many brilliant plays. I want to share with you what I saw. There are only two plays in the entire game where you got less than an A+. You are... TBO, LIT, NFL. After the game, my family gathered together to discuss my experience. It is amazing how all of my children have been impacted by your, what, he, what we call his I am. His I am. I am the best offensive lineman in the NFL. His I am. You see, in this little thing that I did up here with Chris, after I kicked the chair away, I picked the chair and I brought it back. And I said to Deuce, Deuce, you don't have to be all lit up like I was just then. We're going to do it again. You be me, and you ask me again. Chris, hop up here real quick. You, you, you ask me again, and we're going to show you another way. We're going to show you another way that this could happen. I only use that way to wake you up. I think you're waking up. So I'm going to be you. You be me, and you ask that question again. Who's the best offensive lineman in the NFL? And I'll answer it. I'm going to be Deuce, and you're Steve. Deuce, who is the best offensive lineman in the NFL? I am. Thanks. I am. I am. I am creates. I am. I am. I am. I am the best father. I am the best son. I am the best employee. This isn't arrogance. This is declaration. I am a great friend. I am honorable. I am faithful. I am trustworthy. These are declarations. I am. Deuce sent me a big picture of himself before a game. Guess what it said under his picture? I am. It said I am. And he knows what that means. Now, Here's how, after the game, my family gathered to discuss my experience. It is amazing how all of my children have been impacted by your I am, just like all of my clients. I could line up every client that I have and have them come up here and speak to you about what altered in their business based on seeing what happened to Deuce Latouille. I could bring every one of my children up here. <clears throat> Lindsay is my 29-year-old daughter who has twin three-year-olds, she asked that I send this to you. This is her personal... TBO, LIT, NFL. Her TBO, LIT, NFL. 
And she send, sent Deuce a very personal two-page who she is. Probably one of the most valuable things that anyone's ever done in my life for me is to impact my daughter. His story and who he is as a human being has impacted me in every way. The one action that he took has you sitting here. What one action could you take? What commitment could you take? What several actions could you take? Do you know why Deuce takes so many actions now that he didn't before? He's committed to something. I mean, what are you committed to? I'm not questioning you. I'm not doubting you, but what are you really committed to? I mean, really committed to. What are you really committed to? This, these, these are just, this is, this is I, could, I could pass out a hundred of these. I'm going to just share a couple with you. Steve, my dad forwarded me the email you sent him about the deuce. He, his dad forwarded him the email about Deuce Latouille. We had a staff meeting. They read the Deuce Latouille story. They had a staff meeting. And we committed T-B-D-O-I-A-Z, the best dental office in Arizona. I have personally committed to being T-B-D-I-A-Z. Now, you don't have to have an acronym, but that's what he's done. Let me tell you, I want to go to the best dental office in Arizona myself. How about you? This is a true story. I go into a dentist that I knew for a long time. I said, I want to get my teeth redone. That's thanks to Chris. I saw his teeth one day. I said, man, those are beautiful teeth. And he told me I could do that. And I had these really gnarly looking teeth. I looked like a pumpkin. So, so I sit with my dentist, the one I currently have, and I say, hey, uh, you know, I'd like to get my teeth done. Uh, you, can you do them? He says, I can do pretty good. I said, pretty good? I don't want my teeth done pretty good. <laughs> so I say it to him again. I've known him for 20 years, 25 years. Uh, I'd like to get my teeth done. Uh, can you do my teeth? He says, pretty good. He's not my dentist anymore. I went to a guy who looked at me straight in the eye and said, you sit in my chair, I will take care of your teeth. It'll be the best thing you ever had done. How many, how many folks do you think I put in his chair? And you know what? There can be more than one best dentist. I would just want to be going to one of those guys. My mom declared the best mom in the United States. Thank you for sending. This is what people just wrote for thanks for sending them the stuff. Just for sending them the information. Quit being so stingy. How about one commitment we make today? And I don't even care how you just maybe gave us $10,000 here. I'm still talking to you. Quit being so stingy. Imagine if this is coming because I pushed a button and sent it to somebody, what you could do with people that are close in your world. Thank you for sending this to me. I'm inspired by Deuce's commitment, and it does the same thing for me that it appears to have done for the others who have read it. Reading a story makes me want to be my best. It makes me want to play bigger in every area of my every every area of my life to man up and take the challenge of me as I read through this I must tell you that I've never been surprised but always amazed at the impact you have on other people you are a gift to us all I will watch in great expectations and cheer on number 76 this year with a love I have for the greatness in human beings when they're being all they can be thank you for all you've done in my life to bring out the greatness in me now, I've had CEOs that tell me they watch that game as if they were Deuce Latouille playing the game and they get something on how to be a better CEO. Have you ever watched a football game watching a guard? You don't even know they exist. I watch his game, I watch his play three times. That man is the best offensive lineman in the NFL. It has been created. I invite you, DVR if you don't watch football on Sundays, and watch him play tomorrow against Tampa Bay. He knows that today I'm speaking here and that tomorrow, or on DVR, he will have a set of eyes that have never watched him. He said, please tell that audience that they will see the best offensive lineman in the NFL. Can you hear that commitment? Can you hear that, Utah? Can you get that? Turn it on and watch him. Number 76, the right guard. He's why you're sitting here. You don't even know him. One action, one action, one action, one action, one action. What is the commitment that you are? Who's sitting in the chair? Listen to these I am statements. Listen to them. This is a lady who's written four national bestsellers. 
happens to be a client of mine and I can't write a whole sentence. This is a Jan Le Van Zandt. This is after she read the Deuce Latouille story. She put a beautiful picture. It's just gorgeous. I am Iyanla, a God-loving wise woman, humble, spiritual teacher, international best-selling writer and compassionate coach, the best in my craft. Who I am and the work I do touches the souls and the lives of many of people of God's grace and favor. As people and their lives are changed, the world is transformed. One mind, one heart, one life, one spirit at a time. I am on purpose. Is Jeff Dinsdale in the audience? No, just stay there, Jeff. We're going to talk about you for a second. This is from Jeff. He's, he, we, when, when you get committed, you do really strange stuff. So when, when Deuce committed to be TBOLITNFL, I actually made a flag that held had the first flag that ever had the words on it. It was the next day. I sent back to Deuce, you're powerful, so let it be written, so let it be done. He did the clay mask. Then I bought 28 of those jerseys. I hadn't even told 28 people about it. But I bought 28 of them. Then the next thing I did is I made it, and somebody's stolen it. And I'd like it back. It's, I feel like Betsy Ross since we took the flag from her. And I made a flag that looked like this. And I went to the first game like I promised Deuce, and I held the flag up myself. It was the only one in existence. I had people call me every name in the book. I had a guy say to me, you are a dumb MF'er. He said, did your mommy make that for you? That is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. What is that supposed to mean? Let me make you a promise right here, folks. I'm not against this guy. I sent him a book. I tried to help him. I tried to be kind to him. I've never put it in his face. I've even put his document, his, my writing to him to tell him why I had this is the first thing on the website. It's out of chronological order, but it was me trying to explain to him what this means. Now watch. He said, and this is what happens when we're committed. People try to take it away. Say, it can't happen. He said, that's the dumbest thing he's ever seen. And you need to know, my heart was in this thing I had, that, that what made the letters was athletic tape. I, I cut it with athletic tape and then I ironed it on. He should have said my mom was wearing combat boots or something when he said that was a doofy sign. So listen, do you see this right here? This is Tongan. TBO, LIT, NFL. Personal inner commitment. I'm asking you to send this around the world. I'm asking you to send this around the world. You don't have to do it overnight. Do a little bit every day. Watch what happens. The people you send it to and they read it. They'll write you stuff like I get every day. So a flag like this, the original flag was up on Gilbert Road. So I held it over at the stadium and got mocked. Then I put it up on Gilbert Road and people wondered what it was. But a young man that's in the audience goes by and he sees it. So he goes over and Googles it. And he reads the story. He reads the story. He's 23 years of age. He reads the story. He's sent me two or three or four different emails. Remember I'm talking a little bit about I am? I am, t -Bill. So one day, I'm thinking Deuce came by. Because I look out on my front porch, and this is on my front porch. This says, I am, and it's in this little deal. Now, every client I work with, when I'm working with them, we fly their flags. So when I'm with Deuce Latouille, that flag's in the backyard, that flag's in the front yard. That literal flag flies in the backyard, that literal flag flies in the front yard. With every client I work with, we either create a flag, it says what we're doing. We have a committed place we're doing something. So I go by my front door, and this is... If I'm looking out the door, it's like this, so laying on the ground, and I'm thinking, I, I'm really getting to like Deuce, you know? He shows up on time, we get things done, and now he's sending me little gifts. 
I go out there and I open this up. It says I am. So I open it up, and, and there's a flag in it. This is a flag of New Zealand. And there's a note in it, written by a 23-year-old young man. This is my TBO, LIT NFL. To work with you, I have to be someone powerful and courageous. I will call you at 7 p.m. on October 16th to set up an appointment for our first section with a check to pay me in full with this flag in that box. Go to my website, see what I charge. You'll see how magnificent that young man is. How about if we make a commitment today together? Be a little less stingy. How about if we tell a few people where we were today? How about if we have a company? I've got a client named Clayton Mask. First thing he did is he went and bought some of these jerseys, held a company meeting, and shared what he'd learned and committed what he was going to be as a CEO as 130 employees and asked every one of them to go away. Come back in a week. And what will your TBO, LIT, NFL be regarding Infusionsoft? Unbelievable, unbelievable experiences in that company. Can, any, can you hear me? And I don't mean about my volume. Can you hear what I'm saying? Th this isn't anybody special. These, aren't, these, are, these are us. In fact, I often tell, say to someone, the only difference between me and anyone else is my level of commitment. You know, give me some mathematical problems. I don't know if I can do fractions right here. I can barely do my droid. If I have my keys to my car, because, you know, now they just push the button. I used to lose the keys. I'm, I'm as non-technical as anything. But what I have is an extraordinary amount of commitment for myself and commitment for people who are committed. This is a flag made by another man who sent money and things to help. Also happens to be a client of mine. His name is Stephen McGee. These are not advertisements. They don't need advertising. These are powerful people with plenty up. But Stephen McGee is taking six CEOs that are paying him $50,000 each to hike the highest peak in Argentina. And if I could say it correctly, I would. Aconcagua? Yeah, that's it. And they are going to go, and this is the literal flag that will be posted on the highest mountain outside of Asia. Thank you. This literal thing, right here. This is the one going. You remember I was standing in that stand? Remember that the guy was telling me how dumb this word is? This is on the tallest mountain outside of Asia. If I cut Deuce Latui open right now, and there were blood that flowed out of him, do you know what would be on the white and red corpuscles? TBO, LIT, NFL. You'd see it floating. Can you hear me? This level of commitment. So I acknowledge... Jeff Dinsdale, our first coaching session is when? Wednesday at 2 p.m., 23-year-old Jeff Dinsdale. You know what he says to me? I want this to be the best coaching you've ever done in your life. And you know what? It will be. You know why? Because what he's bringing into my room is a massive commitment. A massive commitment. Unbelievable commitment. Here's another one. I'm not kidding. You have 300 of these. How about if you share a little bit and somebody will tell you what they're going to do? Wouldn't that be inspiring to you? What happens when the water goes up? How many boats go up? All of them go up. Every boat goes up when the water goes up. Dear Steve, here's my version of T TBO, LIT, NFL. I am a Catholic Christian committed to living my faith, always improving myself, and always grateful for the life I have. I am committed to being the best husband, father, brother, uncle, nephew, cousin, friend, student, neighbor, employee, co-worker that I can be. I am committed to being present and fully engaged where I am and when I am. I am committed to giving my best at home, at work, and working with others to inspire them to give the best as well. I am committed to delivering what I promise. I am committed to creating a wide open space in the future that I can live into with great possibilities for me, my family, and others. I am committed to getting to know how I can improve any aspect of my life in an effort to discover how I can best serve the world. 
I am a lifelong Redskins fan who will now be watching closely the Arizona Cardinals offensive lineman wearing number 76. What think he? What do you think? What do you think? Is that pretty good? Yeah, no different than you and me. Nobody here I'm reading from has anything on us. Zero. Zero. This is a gentleman who's also shared of his wealth so we could all have the things that we have. Fifteen minutes. Thanks, I got it. Love you. Dear Deuce, inspired by your experience with Steve, I reflected myself on who am I at 3.30 a.m. this morning. This guy reads a story. I asked God to show me who I am, and he did. I am nothing, and I am heart. That's all I am. Nothing more and nothing less. Anything more than that is only what I create myself to be through my declarations and actions. From my nothingness, I can be anything I choose. I choose to be an extremely effective, highly successful commercial real estate and business advisor. I choose to be a great father and husband. I choose to be a great friend, brother and son. I choose to be a great leader in the community, serving people that I need to help. Thanks for whatever courage and humility it took for you to reach out to Steve for help. He has no idea. <laughs> you saw what happened up here, didn't you? That's what I meant. <laughs> it's bad when you only think it's funny. <laughs> Thanks for whatever courage and humility it took for you. Blah, 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 blah. My life is better by knowing you with all my heart. This is just some guy who hears a story. This is a third generation. Somebody told somebody and somebody told to somebody. And then he writes back and sends me a copy. I am the man my wife counts on to take care of her and her children. Hey, women, you want one of those? That's pretty cool, isn't it? I am the man a business partner can absolutely count on to get the job done. I am the man who is no longer afraid but is fearless to declare and act for the life I am committed to my family and me. I am the man who does. Dushan, where are you at? Dushan, Dukic, client. You guys are shifting the world one person and one creation at a time. I love the unfolding. It's a deuce Latui movement. Love beyond compare. Now, I don't know if the audio people can play the I am. Is that possible? If you can play that. This is a, this is a minute and 15 seconds. I ask you to listen to these words. If we can. In the heart, the whole and part of everything I see. Behind the eyes, beyond the skies, reflecting me. At the silent core, and yet before horror phenomenon began. Oh, and after it, and after it, I am oh, oh, oh. Many differences separate us on the surface, yes But I cannot find a boundary in consciousness and when you ask me where does awareness begin and does it end i have to say i have to say i have to say i've, I've always been, been. i ask you to look for a personal in, inner, internal commitment and for your, your own I am, for your own T-B-O-L-I-T-N-F-L. I think I'm going to close. We'll find out. I'd like to finish with two documents. And again, I mean I have hundreds, literally. This is from the president of the University of Santa Monica. 
after he read the Deuce Latouille story. Mary and I loved reading Amy's rendition of what we could, what, what we, excuse me, what we could call. Mary and I loved reading Amy's rendition of what we could call the Deuce Latouille effect. See, they have masters and PhD program. They're teaching leadership around the planet. As you know, our playing field is the master's degree program in spiritual psychology and the Soul Centered Leadership PhD program at the University of Santa Monica. And as a USM grad yourself, you have seen this effect many times as students step more fully into the liveness that comes with emerging into their calling, or as we would say, move more fully into the spirit of who they truly are. The really good news about this is that when others read about this effect, it hits a nerve within them and they are profoundly moved. What a blessing for all of us. Ron Holnick, President, University of Santa Monica. It might be fitting to close on this. But of course, I could change my mind. I don't know. It just feels right. This is from Pua Latui, Deuce's wife. Good morning, Steve. I thought that TBO, LIT, NFL was strictly football and nothing more. I could not see past the NFL part. But as the days progressed, Tusi, that's his real name, Tusi, started to change the way he talked and literally the way he walked. Each and every one of us put out a vibe, whether it's happy, sad, positive, depressed, etc. Tusi's aura was amazing. I was completely drawn to him by his positivity. Then I started to question, what happened in that first session? Steve, coming to that luncheon when you passionately told the Deuce Latouille story opened my eyes to what is actually happening. I couldn't believe how many people were there to hear this story. I couldn't believe how fast TBO, LIT, NFL is affecting others for greatness. I couldn't believe there were people outside of this country supporting my husband's internal commitment. And the major thing that was hard for me to believe was the king of Tonga. Really? Who would have thought that, right? Who would have imagined the possibilities? When my husband declared his commitment to TBO, LIT, NFL, he didn't realize that this would be a domino effect. He didn't realize that it would inspire others as it inspires him. Reading the blogs and the websites and the emails one after another, I was shocked and left in awe. Everything I've read plus 200, I would send to them. Imagine being TBO, LIT, NFL, and you got to read these every day coming from around the world. You think that would support your commitment? Reading the blogs and the websites and emails one after another, I was shocked and left in the eye. And seeing the picture from Scotland topped it all off. This is real. This isn't a dream. This is happening. Words cannot express how appreciative I am for all of those that support TBO, LIT, NFL. I even appreciate all those that took the time to read the letters, TBO, LIT, NFL. Do you know who, do you know who is saying thank you to right now? You. You. She, Pua Latui is saying thank you. Thank you for supporting my husband's commitment. You, you is amazing who I have as a husband. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Steve, your mind moves 100 miles per hour from flags to a website to passing out pieces of paper of TBO. <laughs> My daughter Lindsay and I had that red flag. It was the only one in the, all of the stadium. And I put on little pieces of paper, TBO, LIT, NFL.com. I said, we're going to go stand by the men's restroom, honey. You hold this end of the flag, I'll hold that end. When somebody looks at all interested, you walk up and hand them this, and you ask them to go Google it. How grateful I am that you picked up that paper and read about Matt Leinert. How grateful I am that you had the compassion and the heart to reach out to Matt, and through your lovingness, you found my husband. My husband is my life, my heart, and my everything. Therefore, all that you do for him, you are doing for me. I love you, Steve, from the bottom of my heart and written with tears of appreciation. Ofa adu, Pua Latui. I request that you go home and read this story about Deuce Latui.
that you sit quietly and find out what you want to be committed to. That you send it around the world. You send it to other countries, other cities, other states. You send it to your family. I promise if you, if you do, you will benefit someone's life. I close by saying two things. Be blessed. Be committed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Deuce Fatui.